Or, as we like to say, how you doing, all right? Well, good evening and welcome to this evening's entertainment, evoking the everyday escapades and spectacular spirit, or may I say true grit, of our very own most easterly fishing community. Settle down, sit back, and I beg you, pray silence for Pearls from the Grit! <laughs> Wapload Road, the main street on the grit, which means you are all out at sea. <laughs> to the south of the fishing village, the spire of Christ Church, the fisherman's church. To the north, the net drying posts and the deans. Net stores, fish yards, streets, houses and pubs are all in between. Where's it all gone? And why? I'm trying to work out what happened. Let's start with the piano. In 1900, that could have been in any of the 13 pubs on the grid. We can thank a stricken cargo ship, the Galatea, for that. All the old beach men and beach companies raced off to salvage crates of sewing machines, toys and dolls, box of starch. And 17 pianos. <laughs> Safe as houses in metal cases. You got there fast and it was yours. And when they opened up the cases, not a scratch on them pianos. How's it sounding, Tickler Sam? <laughs> yeah, that'll do. <laughs> Apart from pubs and pianos, what else was on the grit? Oh, the Bethel, the Chapel, Nelson Road and Strand Street, Barbers and Butchers, Hammond's Fish and Chips, Keep a Gone. Carry on there, gal. Fishery and Spurgeon Street, the Noah's Ark Bakery, Old Mozzie's Sweet Shop, Dairies and Laundry, Keep a Gone. Don't you stop yet, there's plenty more. Squire Shop, Gibbs Shop, East Street and Wild Street, Bishop's Ironmongery, Fat and Bun Company, Keep going. Don't need to go nowhere else. Pickland Plots and Root Works. Salter Street and Eden Street. Gas Works and Baldleys. One small community. It's where you're from. It's what you still see, even if it's not really there. It's not a car park. It's your house. The factory is a row of cottages. The estate the village beneath. It's like the wallpaper, you remember? Under the wallpaper, in your front room, that's been knocked into one. As flimsy as a memory, all that's left is in you. Let's take a good look. Hey, Tickler Sam, take us back to the rising sun, one of the last pubs standing in 1965. Oi! You know any proper songs before they put their own noise on the jukebox? It's like they say, the times are a-changing. Too fast and too quick in my opinion. Mm, that's all coming down now, isn't it? Our little house in Wild Street has been compulsory purchased. This pub will be gone next. Let it all go to ruin, didn't they? <laughs> that do need tidying up. That's horrible down here, eh? all smashed up. Well, right. you be glad to get away. That feel wrong to me. There was a real community down here when I was a boy. You didn't have to go uptown for nothing, did you? Well, they wouldn't welcome you if you did. <laughs> it was us and them. The uptowners looked down on us, so we didn't bother looking up. <laughs> Thank you. 
It's 1995. I'm Dean. I'm writing a book, The Grit, with my old mate Jack. He's been a fisherman and a lifeboatman, comes from a family who lived on the grit for generations. And over the years, he's put together a lot of books on the town's history. But he can speak for himself. Say hello, Jack. Hello, all on you. How you all getting on now? Your old friend Jack Rules there. Tell them how he put the book together, Jack. Well, what happened, I get the pictures and the information together, because I've had no education, you know. And, of course, I take them into Dean, and he put the full stops and commas and do the hard work. And with the cassette recorder, we went round and interviewed the people who lived on the grit. I typed them up, put them into English, added a little bit of grammar, yeah, I'll tell you a little story, should have about when I was at school about grammar. The teacher said to me, who's uh, come to the school concert? I say, my fa, my ma, and my bra. <laughs> so he said, where's your grammar? I say, she don't live with us. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jack. But I always wanted to interview someone who knew the grit in its glory days back in the early 1900s, when the fishing was booming. Someone born in the 1880s. Someone like Ned. I was given his story in this brown envelope. It'd been written on an old style typewriter in the early 1960s. He says, I was born the 6th, the 6th of October, 1887. Queen Victoria's Jubilee year, as I was always reminded. We lived at number two, Seavu Cottages, East Street, the beach, Lowestoft. Very near the most easterly point in the country. You come from a big family, didn't you? One of 13. I was the youngest, yeah. My father had seven children and then my mother died. And the old boy went and married again, didn't he? And she had six children of her own. That's 13 kids living in a little old two up and two down. Wherever did you all sleep? Well, the front and back bedrooms were all filled with straw. Girls in the back, boys in the front. <laughs> Every Friday, the straw would be chucked out the windows, carted round the back of the house and burnt. We'd get a fresh load of straw, bung it in the bedrooms, and that was your bed for another week. I first met Ruby when she came into the bookshop where I work. She came in one rainy afternoon, clutching this envelope. We lived on the corner of Strand Street and Anguish Street. And when, when I, I was, was three, three years, years old, old, I started going to Sunday school at Christchurch. During one service, the lifeboat maroons went off and the lifeboat men all rushed down there. Of course, then the congregation began to leave to help with launching the boat. Poor old vicar had to follow, did his sermon on the run to the lifeboat shed. <laughs> And every September we had the same Scots fisher girls stay with us. They were mother's cousins. We'd give them lodgings, you know, bring in a few pounds. They'd go round the town in threes, walking, talking and knitting. <laughs> some would gut heron and some would pack them in barrels between layers of salt. And then the coopers would finish the job, hammering in the lids, ready to send to Russia. We pray for a good home fishing on the grit. Now. A lot of people have said they've never heard it called the grit before. They know it as a beach or the beach village. So where does the grit come from? Well, sand is grit, isn't it? And there was plenty of sand down there, unmade roots. And you needed plenty of grit to live there. All the old people used to say the grit. Those that lived when the fishing were going strong. Because, you know, those three years leading up to the First World War were lost of great fishing bonanza. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. On the 12th of October, 1913, 10 million herring were landed at Lowestoft. One boat, the boy Roy, netted £3,240. In today's money, that's £340,000. In one boat, in one day, in Lowestoft, in 1913. Look at them go. 
There were 770 vessels, 350 local and 420 Scottish, each with a crew of around 10 men. That is nearly 8,000 fishmen landing in Lowestoft in 1913. Seven percent of the catch was exported to Germany and Russia. That is 466 million herring. More fish than the population of America. Landed in Lowestoft in 1913. And that explains overfishing. <laughs> The German and Russian exports stopped after the First World War. And that's why we were so hard up in the 20s and 30s. But who can forget the great fishing bonanza of Lowestoft in 1913? Come and follow me to a village by the sea, home of the rising sun. Every first of May, crowned for the day, kings and queens when we were young. Down the streets and scores, we'd knock on all the doors, ready with our pans and tins. Dressed up in our clothes, paper frocks and bows, everyone knew what to sing. Flying at the doors, knocking down the spiders. from a Salvation Army band hymn, weren't it? Every May Day, we'd go to people's doors, sing that song, and rattle your tin for a few pennies. One old gal lived in Spurgeon Street. Always used to get me to sing that on my own. Oh, I hated it. She said I had the voice of an angel. All my friends used to stand round and laugh. <laughs> Dressed up in paper frocks, we did. Mother did my hair in ringlets, bit of curtain for a veil. Must have been when I was about seven. Dad was out at sea. Mum mended nets at home. I think nearly every house on the grit had a hook stapled in the kitchen window frame for mending nets. Back then I spent a lot of my time in front of the old wireless, <laughs> listening to see if I could hear my dad. Billy, his name was. Skipper of the Fisher Queen. I knew your dad right well. Puffin' Billy, we called him. One of the best skippers in the port. Sailed with him many a time on that Fisher Queen. Well, every evening between seven and nine, he had to call the boat owner, tell him how many herring he'd caught, that sort of thing. And we could listen in at home. Of course, they couldn't hear us. We could only listen in those days. You had to turn the dial until you heard one of them old skippers saying, Hello? 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 And then we knew we'd got the right wavelength. <laughs> And after they'd finished saying when they were going to be back in the harbour, they'd always have a message for the wife and the little ones. All the skippers' wives and families would be there, listening round the old wireless. Well, my dad, he'd say, I hope you children have been behaving yourselves. I reckon I'll be home for the weekend. <laughs> and then he used to say, And I want to send my love to you, Jessie, my darling. That was my mum. Do you know what he'd do then? He'd sing her a song, same one every night. My mum would go a shade of red, she would, knowing that everyone would be listening. But he always used to do it. She used to get suffin' roiled. She'd tell him off. Ah, oh, Billy, stop your blather. But he always used to do it. I'll see you in my dreams. I'll hold you in my dreams. Someone took you out of my arms Still I feel the thrill of your charms Lips 
that once were mine Tender eyes that shine They will light me home tonight I'll see you in my Billy sounds like a real character. In my family, we got a lot of Billys. Always use the same first names we do. William, John, Robert and Edward. And to work out who's who, we have to say Billy's boy, Billy. <laughs> That's your dad? That's right. Then there's Billy's boy, Jack. Jack's boy, Johnny. Bob's boy, Billy. Bob's boy, Bob. Not to be confused with his brother's son, the boy, Bob's Billy's boy, Bob. <laughs> That's why you have to have a nickname. <laughs> I'm talking of all the First World War now, when the old beachman would vote to choose a coxswain of the lifeboat. Big day on the grit that was. But the voters list had to give all the men's nicknames to ensure that the right Billy, Jack, William, Robert, John got the vote. Every man on the grit had to have a nickname. My dad was known as Puffin because he caught a lot of fish or smoked a pipe. <laughs> I reckon you must have heard of Puffin, Billy. The old locomotive steam train. That went right fast, didn't it? So did my boat. Always the first one at the fishing ground we were. There you go again. You're called Puffin because you're full of a lot of old steam and hot air. <laughs> That's you, Puffin Billy. You never mind being on my boat, though, do you? So... What's your nickname then, Ned? Ned is my nickname, you fool. <laughs> my proper name is George, but no one called me that. You see, my father was George, but they called him Young Ned, because his father was Old Ned. <laughs> that got right confusing, because my older brother's Young Ned and all. <laughs> That's like Young Twee Swarm. <laughs> That's right. There's been some good old names. Yeah. Uh, Tar the clock lifting. Yep. Uh, Sheppy hook. Hook. Yep. Parakeet. Uh, butcher. butcher. Yeah. Yep. Uh, strawberry cook. Strawberry. Did he have an allotment? Allotment? No. He had a big bread snout. <laughs> As Pass Fletcher, he was one of the best young uh, fishmen around his day. Called him Posh because of that pal of his, that writer fella, Edward Fitzgerald. Ah. Old Fitz, he was right interested in fishermen's yarns. Used to go out to sea in a silk hat, wrap it on with a scarf, stop, stop the wind, taking it off. Yeah, he had his own boat called the Scandal. Hmm, good name, that was. Yeah, well, old Fitz used to take young Posh to all the well-to-do restaurants. Now that was a scandal. What a couple they must have looked. You know what they were? A couple of rummins. <laughs> but they didn't do you any harm. Well, no matter what anybody say about Porsche Fletcher, he were off the grip. He one of us. That's right. That's funny. I can still picture my dad like he was standing there a day. You live long enough, you get to be older than your parents, don't you? I remember holding his hand. Big and strong, that was. Skin was dry from all that old salt water. Mum said you could stand a penny up in the cracks in his hand. He was one of the top skippers. They all wanted to sail with him. Earned a lot of money, so Mother said. Got rid of it just as quick. <laughs> a real character, so they tell me. A lot of characters there are on the grip. Arthur Happy Wellham, the chimney sweep. He was quite a character. Lived in Lighthouse School with his wife Phoebe. Hey, Jack, you knew him, didn't you? There was a joke about the old boy because he had a big red bulbous nose. He, he got drunk like he always did. And, of course, when he fell off the horse and cat, he got his snout stuck in a tram line. <laughs> then someone come along, grabbed his legs and pushed him to the nearest turntable to get it out. What about the time when the German Navy bombarded the town in 1916? Unexploded shell fell right outside his front gate. 
Old Happy gets a broom, rolls that bomb into his garden so he can charge people tuppence to look at him. <laughs> at least till the police come along and stopped him. <laughs> his poor old wife Phoebe. She make lemonade for the kiddies in the summer. And if you want stronger stuff, he also sell ginger beer. There was a sign up on his door. If you're dry, come and try Happy's homemade brew. <laughs> That'll unblock your chimney. <laughs> you always see him around town with his old donkey and cart. He loved that donkey more than Phoebe, I reckon. Once, when there was a flood and the water reached his front door, Daft old fella dragged that donkey upstairs so they'd be safe. I'm surprised that weren't used for a bit of water. A number of times that flood round here. First flood I remember was when I was about seven. I was at Mariner's Score School. Man come around, ringing the bell, telling the mothers to get their children from school, so pick up your hats and get home. Get your lino up, take it upstairs, and get yourselves upstairs. 12th of November, 1896. Lowstoft Weekly News. The flood that threatens. When the season turns, turns to winter, sturdy beach folks start to wonder. Will this be the year where the remorseless storms and relentless ocean come together to sing the flood's eternal song? 28th November 1897. Severe storms and record high tide submerges streets like never before. 7th of January 1905. Fishing families flee rising waters. Waves smash windows and doors. Cold wind blow when the seas rise up. Cold wind blow when the storm won't stop. Cold wind blow when the big wave struck. Cause you never know when you need your luck. 25th of November, 1925. New sea wall breached. Floods unstoppable, locals warn. 12th of February, 1938. Wobload Road inundated. The church threatened, but the tide turns. Cold wind blow when the seas rise up. Cold wind blow when the storm won't stop. Cold wind blow when the big wave struck. Cause you never know when you need your Thirty first of January, nineteen fifty three. North Sea surge wreaks havoc. Beach village counts cost. Fishing fleets face disaster. No hope for the Guava and her eleven men, all lost. Cold wind blow when the seas rise up. Cold wind blow when the storm won't stop. Wind blow when the big wave struck. Cause you never know when you need your luck. You certainly do need your luck any way you can find it. And you don't want nothing to bring you bad luck. My mother would never wash my father's clothes the day he sails. She say that was like she was washing him away. I've had an old skipper who see a nun on his way to the harbour and he cancelled the whole trip. Bad omen to see a nun or a vicar. I stirred my tea with a handle of my knife once and my dad got angry. He say, stir with a knife, stir up strife. Old Billy was one of those who never liked a clean boat. He say, a muggy boat's a busy boat, but don't you go leaving a broom on the nets, you'll be swept out of sea. <laughs> my father got an ear in because that was good luck. It's supposed to help your eyesight. Mind you, had to be a gold ear in. That way, he say, if they find your body at sea... They got enough money to bury you. Any white stones in the fishing net were thrown straight back into the sea. White was the colour of the dead. It's said that we die three times. The first is when you stop breathing. 
The second is when the last person dies who knew you. And the third is when your name is spoken out loud for the final time. Mariners score school, class one, 1924. Let's see if we can bring these old Britsters back to life. Hey, Ruby, know any names on this photo? Well, I do know that's me. Back row, middle, bow in my hair. <laughs> we certainly looked rough and ready, didn't we? I do know their faces, but their names, no, they're gone, I'm afraid. If only that picture could talk. Ethel Strickland Ada Jones Daisy Howlett Elizabeth Rose Jack Aldred Don Bellinger Victoria Hall George Daly Rita Turner Jesse Bullen William Haylock Mary Sticks Eileen Cullen Arnie Blythe Danny Dyer Billy Butcher, Ivy Harness, Ivan Hall, Beatrix Tucker, Ivy Beard, Jimmy Bull, Hazel Disney, Bobby Wig, Fred Harold, Tom Swan, Winnie Utting, Maud Nunn, Beatrix Hardingham, Ruby. Clark. Daddy's gone to sea and don't know where he's been. Skipper on a drifter called the Fisher Queen. Mother's in the front room busy mending nets. Grandma knits a gansy patches of her dress. Cobblestones and fish bones, gas nuts and candles. Hello? Jessie, my darling, you're home. Bella, Bella, you're home. I've been beside myself. You don't have to worry about me, sweetheart. Oh, what a storm. They say it came out of nowhere. Ah, oh, the old sea breeze ain't gonna do for me. I heard all hell broke loose, and when there was no sign of the Fisher Queen or the Justifier. The Justifier? What, old Fred Thacker's boat? We were all there on the seafront. Nellie Thacker, Ivy Cooper, all the other wives stood there in silence. What could we say? Well, Fisher Queen always has been lucky. With every boat, I closed my eyes and prayed that when I opened them again, I'd see LT-649 steaming into harbour. And when it did... Oh, I can shake your bloody cock of boots. <laughs> and poor Nellie Thacker's still out there waiting. Ah, he's a good sort, Fred. Proper old skipper. He won't be far behind me, I reckon. I hope. Oh, Billy, what did I tell you before? Uh, you old kept back. Yeah. Well, uh, there was a storm, Jess. That much is true. I was down off dog a bank. Nothing special. We rode it. There was a bit of damage to the boat, though. Nothing we can't fix, don't you worry. But do worry. I saw the state of the Fisher Queen. We almost torn off. And my brother says there's so many boats been missing this year. He was asking again. Your brother's asking for trouble. He's Billy. He says he can still get you that job at Crafts on the coal boat. I told you for. I hint the coal man. I'm not a proud man, but I hint cart and coal. I'm a fish man. Oh, you'll still be on a boat. Coal boats hint the same. Fish will come good, you'll see. It'll be like 1913 all over again. And I'll still know how to catch heron. But you can't sell them at the market. And they take your boat and dump them back in the sea again. Or spread them on the land for fertiliser. Where's the sense in that? <laughs> well, the old women might have stirred up a bit of trouble, but the ocean still gave us a good haul. Most boats came back with no fish because of the storm. So our catch sold well. We are behind on the rent. And there's what I owe Mr Squire at the shop. 
And Sidney Cook, the butcher, he's been so patient. And Ruby, our boots needed mending. Oh. <laughs> that leaves a... Uh... Go on, away with yourself, over to the rising sun. Thank you, Jessie, my darling. Sometimes you do need a drink. I know. But first, I'm off to see my Ruby. Oh, no, she's away in bed. Don't you go waking her up. And she's cross with you. You didn't send her a postcard. I wrote one. But I didn't post her. You spoil that gal you do. What about the other wee bairns? You've got three children, you know. You're away fishing for so long, when you come home, the little and don't know who you are. You're a family man, Billy Clark. I don't know what we'd do without you. You'll think about that job on the coal boats, won't you? I will, Jessie. Talking to your brother can't do any harm, I suppose. That mean a lot to me, Billy. Oh, I seem to spend my whole life waiting for boats. <laughs> father was a fisherman, born at 2 Cumberland Square on the Grit on the 14th of October 1840. Ned says here, mother was hard up when father was at sea and she had a lot of run-ins with our landlord, old oh, Mr. Mr. Scar, Scar was his name. name. I think he was a solicitor by trade, lived in Norwich. And you've seen those Victorian cartoons of the old red men? Well, he was just like that. With his Gladstone bag for the money. What happened when you did get behind with the rent? Oh, he'd come knocking on your door. Once, my mother say, you'll get paid when I get some money. My 13 kids come first. He say, Mrs. Scarl and I were never blessed with children. My mother, she say, oh, she ought to have married a fisherman. She'd have plenty of kids then. <laughs> When the fishing was bad, my dad had to go down the beach and pick up stones, you know, for building roads, just to bring in a bit of money. Well, he was a skipper with all the papers to prove it. I mean, the Fisher Queen was one of the best boats and all. Once, when he had to go to Yarmouth to test the compass, I was allowed to go with him on the Fisher Queen, up there in the wheelhouse. Oh, I was as sick as a toad. <laughs> I didn't tell him that, though. He said I was the Fisher Princess. And if he ever got a new boat, he was going to call it that. We were lucky to live so close to the sea. 
And as children, you'd spend your whole summer on the beach. We used to live down there. Mother knew where to find us. I'll lead you by the hand to a playground on the sand, home of the gasworks gang. Sweet so from mossy shop, marble spinning tops, down to the deans we ran. Half penny ice cream, summers are ever dream, but the lighthouse still shines on. All down what boat road, let the east wind blow, listen and you'll hear this song. Flying at the walls, knocking down the spiders, cabbages and turnips too. Put them in a hallelujah sauce and then we'll have a rare old stew. Oh, I've done a lot of things in my lifetime, but at school I was never hardly at school. The boys around here will tell you I was mostly on the old Arbor Beach playing a boat. They used to come down after me. I used to be running around in Mother's tin bath around the harbour. I suppose boys were as much the same as ever. I used to borrow a boat tied up the east side of the Waveney Dock. I used to say if you chained and locked your boat both ends, the boys would come and take away the middle. <laughs> you used to make a cart with a wooden box and four wheels. Start at the top of Spurgeon Score, sail right down there across Wapalug Road. <laughs> One time we hit a big old stun, and that sent us heading straight for the rising sun. Thankfully, Happy Wellen was coming out the door, so we landed on something soft. <laughs> he gave us a clip round the ear for that. What was Happy Wellen doing that far south? I thought the East England Tavern was his local. Well, any port in a storm. I mean, his job's all mucky and sooty, isn't it? So at the end of the day, he went into the nearest pub to wash it all down with liquid refreshment. And if he had one too many, he'd still get him home on his donkey and cart, because his old dog would take the reins. <laughs> yeah, there's plenty of pubs down there to choose from. Yeah. The flowing bowl was one across the road from me. Yeah, of course I do know a rhyme they used to say about all the pubs on the grid. You used to do that at the old Beachman's concerts, didn't you? Hmm. The old smokers. My party piece. Go on, Puffin' Billy. Before you go, give us the 30. Nah, I bet me off. The old guy will be climbing up the wall. No, come on, Billy. Look just for us. All right, all right. Calm you down, boy. I hadn't done it in a while, and I don't know if I can still remember it. Well, I'll see if I can help. The 13. The lucky 13. I down it in one in the rising sun. I have two halves after in the balaclava. Best ale and joyful in the Princess Royal. Four sheets the wind in the east of England. I sink five rums in the Inkerman. Fell for Jesse's charms in the fisherman's arms. What's he having? Heard the gasworks tell him. They say he wouldn't learn at the sailor's return. All bragging and curses in the wagon horses. Too much, my boy, in the old Dutch hoy. Mud in your eye, in the old Mayfly. And in the flowing bowl. Blood oh, no. out, out cold. <laughs> and then it come back to me in the Suffolk fish reed. I should have been hung for my tea sometime yesterday. <laughs> so, I have another one in the rising sun. I have two hours after in the balaclava. Best ale and joyful in the Princess Royal. Four sheets the wind in the east of England. I sink five rums in the Inkerman. Fell for Jesse's charms in the fisherman's arms. Oh, What's she heaven? having in the gasworks tavern? They say he won't learn in the sailor's return. All bragging and curses in the wagon and horses. Too much, my boy, in the old Dutch hoy. Mud in your eye in the old Mayfly. And in the flowing bowl. Blood oh, out cold. <laughs> and then it come back to me. In the Suffolk fishery, tomorrow I'll be off to sea, and so the old gal can't moan at me. <laughs> and so I have another one in the rising sun. <laughs> <laughs> sun. Now, it says here, in the early 1900s, the Grit had 13 pubs. 
and was home to over 2,000 people. That's the most pubs per population in the country. Now, don't you go getting the idea that means we're all drunkards, because we're not. We go to the pub, one pint of beer, and sit and play dominoes all night. We never drink a lot, because we never have the money. The way I look at it is this. When you've been away at sea 14 days at a time, tossed here and there by the wind, wave and storm, when you get ashore, of course you're going to have a drink with your shipmates. You'd buy them one, they'd buy you one. Sometimes you do need a drink. Worst night I had was off dog a bank. Was hit by a gale, full force of it. Wheelhouse roof torn off, mizzen mast carried away, wind is smashed in. Alone, helpless in the dark. You knew what come into my head that night? When I get to port, I used to send a postcard home to my little girl, Ruby, just to tell her I was safe. That night, on that boat, hurled around in those waves, I thought I hadn't sent her a postcard. I had the thing with me, didn't I? Still had it in my pocket. I shook me up the dead, thinking she'd never get it. How did you get back home that night? We were lucky, weren't we? We found the last piece of canvas on board. Troy said it was, and we managed to steady the ship. We turned our head into the wind, and next morning we brought a home safe to port. Right state we must have looked, limping into harbour or busted up. We used up all our luck that night, we did. Now I am a fisherman, drifting with the tide, searching for herring. Storms I got to ride, thought I'd like a life at sea, but very soon I found wasn't all plain sailing boy out on the fishing ground. So heave away, coil away, let's heave up them all. When we get the fish on board, we'll have another haul. It's straightway to the capstan, together heave away for it's just as light when the moon shines bright as it is at the break of day. Now when we get the market, we have our fish to sell. We put them on the quayside and hope that we've done well. The boys all gather round, the boyers they do too. We knew they're gonna rob us but there's damn all we can do. So heave away, coil away, let's heave up them all. When we get the fish on board, we'll have another haul. It's straightway to the capstan, together heave away. For it's just as light when the moon shines bright as it is at the break of day. Don't call us common fishermen anymore. Don't call us common fishermen anymore, anymore. Fresh fish to you will bring. Don't call us a common thing. We're as good as them that work upon the shore. Swept off a trawl, a poor old Tommy Wilson was. When a fisherman is lost, the whole town mourned. Bless him, I knew Tommy right well when he was a boy. 
Used to go to school with my brother, he did. And we all loved Maud Wilson. Heart of gold, that old girl. Six foot two, West Indian, arms like tree trunks. First black family in Lowestoft, they were. Her son Tommy and my brother were little horrors. Once, when they were up to no good at school, Tommy were the one who got caught by the headmaster, Old Amos. <laughs> old Amos, oh, you heard stories about him. Gave 36 boys three cuts of the cane on each hand. Never raised a sweat. Amos met his match, he did, when he come up against old Maud. That time he took Tommy out of the classroom, they counted 28 strokes. But Amos made one mistake. When he'd finished with Tommy, he let go of his collar and he ran home. Well, up come old Maud. She had on a pair of men's leather sea boots and her apron and her sleeves rolled up. The teacher, Mr Regis, stood at the top of the steps of Royal School and all she could say was, Where's Amos? Before he had a chance to answer, she pushed him out of the way. He fell straight back, flat on his back. She looked in every classroom, in every cupboard, behind every wall and desk. Do you know what the old bugger had done? Down the playground there was another classroom on the Wapload Road. He must have gone in there and hid behind an old stove. He must have seen her coming and realised what he'd done. She went through that school like a cyclone. I've never seen anything like it. She was absolutely boiling with steam coming out of her ears. All she could say was, where's Amos? Where's Amos? If she'd have caught Amos, she'd have killed him. Real old gritster she was. She was one of us. Come from all over on the grid, didn't we? My mother, she was a Scots fisher girl from Fraser. Met father when she came down for the heron. <laughs> they were all known as girls, whatever their age. Town came to life when they arrived. That's so exciting every October. They come by boat, by lorries, 2,000 of them by train. The old village doubled in size. Oh, those lassies, they don't have work. All hours in any old weathers. 60 fish a minute they can gut. You stand and watch them with their knives going like lightning. And they were always singing while they worked. My mother, she were always singing. It's early in the morning and it's late into the night. And your hands are cold and chapper and you look an uncut sect. And you're greeting like a wee, and when you put them in the brie, and you wish you were a thousand miles away from those stuffed key. <laughs> when they got talking, that sounded like a foreign language. <laughs> Mind you, a lot of people don't think we talk proper. <laughs> I did like their singing, though. Lots of singing there was on the grip. There was. <laughs> when I worked at Hastings House, I was always singing, mending the net. Started there when I was 14. Our governor say, when my girls are singing, I know they're busy. He didn't like us talking because you have to look at each other when you're talking. That mean you ain't working. So we could sing as much as we wanted. My mother, my sisters and my aunts, they were all beachters. They'd mend the nets at home too. I tell you, the fishing couldn't have gone on without the women. And they bring up the little ones when the fishermen are away. I mean, a fisherman's life is entirely different to those assured. Some people said, well... We don't know the difference between a miner and a fisherman, I do. A miner had a dangerous job, but at night he could go home and jump in the bed with his old girl, couldn't he? He'd keep her warm, where a fisherman he had to lay out there for 12 days, praying that they would see harbour again. So to me there's a hell of a lot of difference between a miner's job and a fisherman's job. I'd love to talk to a fisherman from the days of sail and steam. You know, one of those men who caught all those fish in 1913. What do you want to ask then, Squire? When did you first start working at sea? I was 13. I was a cook on board one of those old smacks out of North Shields. Seasick, homesick. Cooking for ten men. First pie I made. I went to serve it up. Dropped the lot. The old skipper jumped up, scooping it up off the floor with his hands, putting it down on the plates. That'll be all right, my boy. Made some suet pudding. They all sit there chewing away. Skipper say... 
Didn't nobody throw this overboard? Now I'll take the rider off for smack. <laughs> I was 13. And cook on board that boat for six months. Nobody died. <laughs> what about when anyone did get sick? Well... Skipper had numbered the medicine bottles. A lot of the old fish men couldn't read or write. The crew would say, I got the runs. Skip would say, think of a number. <laughs> Whatever number you chose, that's the medicine you got from the bottle. Could have been cough mixture. Could have been liniment. That would take your mind off it. <laughs> What else did you catch? I mean, apart from herring. Uh, well, you didn't want to catch new jellyfish. The nets had ripped them to pieces. And then when you shook out the nets, the stings would go all on you. On your face, on your hands, on down your collar. And then you'd have to go down in the engine room. Wash and paraffin. Open the boiler door. That'd draw the itch from your skin. After all that, why on earth would you still want to go to sea? That's bread in you. I didn't say how many times I've been round this island. But if I didn't do it, I'd miss it. I'd miss the men I sail with. Good comrades all on. Nothing's the same at sea. Everything changes day to day, hour to hour. Wind, waves, the sky. You've got to respect the sea like any woman. She can be right calm and she can be right wild. <laughs> but it's a beautiful life at sea. As it is at the break of day. That old kit bag. My mum was always on at my dad for leaving it in the way. Used to remind her, didn't it, that it'd soon be time for him to get up and go again. That was a silly accident. The Fisher Queen was home safe from a fishing trip and as it landed, they reckon he tried to jump ashore. That's what they reckon. Dad must have fell between the dock and the boot. Drowned, 44 years old. All they found was his old kit bag on the dock. Unlucky, they said. In East Street there's a cottage In my 
I call it home. A dog waits for his master, mother's on her own. I hold on to his postcard, I try to catch his voice. I want to sail into his arms, see the smile light up his face. He sends love and kisses, daddy says he'll be home soon. Daddy hopes the fish is better, wishes for a herring moon. When he turned the corner, my face looked to the sky. Cheerio, I said, the day he sailed, we never said goodbye. Beyond the bright horizon, never knowing when he'll land. My dad is still the skipper with a postcard in his hand. time we let Happy Wellen have his say because I have it on good authority that he is in the building this evening. Mr. Wellen, are you there? Mr. Wellen! Woohoo! Now, <coughs> don't you not believe in all that old tripe you might hear about me, old boy? What do you want to know, old friend? We've heard so much about you already. Well, you know. Well, I'll tell you something about me you don't know. You know those old beachman's concerts? We call them smokers. They go on all night, they do. Oh, bluster, they go on. And me and my bra, Brassy, we always do a turn, we do. Actually, I have heard that. Oh, you have, have you? But I bet you don't know that yours truly has sung at the Lowstoff Hippodrome. <laughs> I did. You don't believe me, dear, but I did. <laughs> I wasn't asking you, Tickler, Sam. I knew no one would believe me, so I brought along this newspaper cutting. Now, you just read that. Out loud. <laughs> the Hippodrome, 11th of December, 1905. The building is packed for a Saturday, Saturday night, night fundraiser. fundraiser. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Earlier this evening, we witnessed the married men's race, where our competitors ran twice around the auditorium, carrying a barrel of ale before they arrived on this stage to declare, I love my wife. <laughs> the excitement is palpable. <laughs> where are you going? <laughs> What's he doing? him leaving. <laughs> I can't work with this. This is a low strop hippodrome. Not great flipping Yarmouth. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, twice around the auditorium, onto the stage. I love my wife. <laughs> Somebody fetch the medics. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the winner knocking 12 seconds off the previous record. My goodness me, you Credit it. it was not now. It was working hard. Ladies and gentlemen, it's this gentleman here. This gentleman here who wins. The gentleman. He wins. The gentleman who wins. He wins a packet of tea. A packet of tea. A packet of tea. That's right, sir. Don't eat it all at once. Ladies and gentlemen, next up for your unadulterated adulation. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. It's the race we've all been waiting for. It is the oldest lady in the auditorium competition. Can I start the bidding at 60? 
60, anyone? Hands up in the air. 60 iron bid, 60 odd one over here. Any scintillating sexagenarians in the audience? Any 80, 80, 80 iron bid, 80 I've got, 80 I've got. My, not now, not now. 80 I've got, look my lord, she's 105. She's 105. It's the ever youthful Mrs. Jennings who wins. She wins. She wins. She wins a China teacup. It's a China teacup. Oh, Mrs. Jennings. Oh, Mrs. Jennings receiving the thing for my goodness me, sunshine. My goodness, not now, not now. Mrs. Jennings, the China teacup every flipping week. It's wet, I washed it up. Still not dead. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, now, the finale of the show. The finale. The finale, the finale of this evening's entertainment. The singing competition. Yes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. The last of our five illustrious Lowstoftian luminaries, each bravely battling it out to become the best singer this side of Yarmouth. And win a battle of ale. That's right. Finally, our final one of the five is, ladies and gentlemen, our final one is... It, it, now it is. <laughs> Girls and boys, shut your noise for Happy's homemade song. I will introduce you myself. Lumbunctuous. Rakish, raffish, rogue. Bombasticaciously, briskly brush with a brush and broom. A peerless prince among chimney sweeps and their perilous pots. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I give to you. Arthur, happy Wellham Esquire! Evening, ladies! Evening, gents! That's an honour! That's an honour! Tickler! Give your thumbs a rest, will you? I can't hear myself think, oh dear! Ah, where was I? Oh, yes. <laughs> I'd like you to sing a song that I wrote myself. You wrote a song? I did. And that rhyme and everything that do. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm the local chimney sweep. No chimney is too steep. <laughs> Smoke and ashes in my head instead of brains. I'm covered in no soot from my hat down to my butt. But I'll wash the very next time that it rains. Oh, I'm happy. But if I had the luck, a frown will get you down. A smile will cheer you up. Oh, I'm happy that's the song to sing. Trouble makes us miserable. bubble. A smile don't cost a thing. Ha! <laughs> 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 I never will forget. When me and Phoebe met, got my brush stuck up a chimney all the way. Got the blasted thing to move, gunpowder in a stove, blew off half a roof, what could I say? Oh, I'm happy, but I a frown will get you down, a smile will cheer you up. Oh, I'm happy, that's the song to sing, trouble makes us miserable. A smile don't cost a thing. <laughs> At the pearly gates, I'll arrive there late. 
St. Peter asked for him, I got no common sense. He reads out all my sins. Well, I stand there with a grin. And this is what I'll say in my defence. Oh, I'm happy that if I had the luck, a frown will get you down. If I were regular, oh, I'm happy that's the song to sing. Trouble makes us miserable. A smile don't cost a thing. <laughs> now it's your turn. Can we have the words, please? Right, after four. One, two, three, four. Oh, I'm happy. I'd never if I had that up. A frown will get you down. A smile. Oh, I'm happy. That's the song to sing. Trouble makes us miss from bubble. A smile down. Arthur, get off! Get off, Arthur! Arthur, get off! Get off. Ladies and gentlemen, Arthur, happy well of Esquire! Winner of the Valley of May! It's 2019, and I'm adding a new chapter to the book, thanks to Ned and Ruby. Times have changed. People are living on the grit again. They're building houses, converting old net stores into flats. New industries too. One of the biggest wind turbines in the country. I've been rereading my notes and letters, doing new interviews, listening to the old tapes. Even these are out of date now. Hey, Jack, any final words to add? Yeah, with, with all this air lot coming down in the 60s, they demolished what would today have been the biggest tourist attraction, all the old fish houses, all the old fishermen's cottages. They, they done themselves more harm pulling them down than they did to keep them because they could have been done up, you know, as, as, in, in their original form. That's funny. We never stopped working down there on the grip, my husband and me. We both ended up in the bird's eye factory down there. He was a filleter and I was on the pea line. <laughs> we lived in Wild Street, brought up my two boys there, and I wouldn't let them be fishermen. We were there in the floods in 1953. We lost the lot, but we couldn't leave. Water never left either, bumps coming through the plaster. House came down in 1965, and then we moved to Europa Road. Indoor toilets, hot running water, luxury. And what about a postcard from Billy? What did the last one say? Dear Jesse, just a few words to say. I reckon we'll be home for the weekend. Tell Ruby, look out for us. David Jones been up to his old tricks again. I reckon I know better. Here's to good catch tomorrow. More luck than we need. I'll see you in my dreams. Good night, sweetheart. Love, Bailey. Ned added one last paragraph to his story. May 1972, he says, the final chapter is a short one. Every house on the east side of Wobbland Road has now been demolished. All the roads completely obliterated. Anguish Street, East Street, Wild Street, as dust. I don't weep for it though. Much of it served its turn. They could have kept an old cottage Rubber houses, should have kept some of it. That's like they want to forget us. Yeah. 
I'm visiting a residential home, running a reminiscence session, and I'm talking to this very old lady. Her carer tells me the old girl lived on the grit, went to school there. Her father was a skipper. I'd like a natter with you, if that's all right. Mm. About your old fishing village? There was that song they used to sing there every May Day. Climbing up the walls it went. Oh, we did that. Did you? Ooh. Knocked on people's doors and dressed up in paper frocks we did. Mother did my hair in ringlets. We bang on people's doors and sing climbing up the walls. Then they loved it and they gave us a penny. Are you enjoying this? I am. <laughs> I've been looking for the tune of that song everywhere. Would you sing it for me? No, no, no. It's, it's just I want to teach the children in schools how to sing that song. Oh, well, yes, if it's for education, yes. We can't lose, lose oft. <laughs> Climbing up the walls, carrots and spiders. She forgets the words. Knocking Tries on again, the walls. gets into a muddle. So we keep talking. And her carer says, will you sing it once more? Just for me, Ruby. That's our Ruby. Oh, it's me, I'm Ruby. Ruby Clark. That was the two climbing up the wall, knocking down the spiders, cabbages and turnips too. Put them in your hallelujah saucepan, then we'll have a good old stew. Oh, that <laughs> must have been when I was seven. Now I'm a hundred. <laughs> You may think we're history, long lost village by the sea, like dust beneath your boots. But between you and me, board up all the windows. But like the sun, we'll rise. Dunwich is more romantic. Church bells chime beneath the sea. We had three churches and 13 pubs, and we're talking recent history. Board up all the windows, Empty all the houses, but like the sun, we'll rise. Bombs dropped around the gas works. A flood tried to push us off, but the council went and finished the job. All those memories lost. Board up all the windows, empty all the houses, dig up all the roads, but like the sun, we'll rise. That's not our fault the fishing's gone. We worked right hard, night and day. They built new houses round the town. Old families moved away. Board up all the windows. Empty all the houses. Dig up all the roads. Scatter all the people. But like the sun, we'll rise. I'll tell you where this village was but you won't find much left there. A turbine marks the spot, and there's something in the air. Board up all the windows. Empty all the houses. Dig up all the roots. Scatter all the people. Turn the place to rubble. But, but like, like the, the sun, sun we'll, we'll rise. rise.